I am Christopher Balzano. And welcome to Tripping on Legends. Episode, Episode 93, Whistling Past the Graveyard. Whistling Past the Graveyard. The first thing we have oh, to do... Oh yeah. I hope that's sleepy time tea that you've got there. And oh not. no, it's not. <laughs> um, first of all, we should probably say, okay. uh, welcome back. It's been a while since we've actually been on the air. I don't think we did a, we've done a, a live show since um, since since when Deanna since. was here and we went out for fairy hunting. Yeah. I so that have. would have been spring break. So wow, that's it's, a really we're in the time. heat of summer now. Um, so hot that I actually just moved the air conditioner down three degrees for the show. Three whole degrees. Three whole degrees because it is really hot in this house because we've got a hot show for you tonight. No? Okay. Um, but also, I want to apologize for how boring it is behind us. Um, we usually have our pictures up there, but we are in a major... Um, Tripping on Legends North is on a major uh, reconstruction project, uh, which really just means we're painting and getting rid of a whole bunch of things. Um, so we don't actually have... Um, the, chalk, uh, but the paint that we're going to use is chalkboard paint, so when we, like like prime it and stuff, um, we'll be able to draw on it with chalk. It's like a chalkboard. Exactly. So we've already got two chalkboard centers in the house that we've established and we decided... That wall and then the bathroom. The bathroom. We decided to do chalk walls in their bathroom, not in my bathroom. Um, because we were like, oh, let's do something really interesting behind us. As you can barely see our... Um, Ouija board. Tripping on Legends Ouija board and then my school sign. Which you can't see. Ew, it's ew, behind ew, me. Ew, 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 ew. Yeah, it's really devastating back there. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, today's tonight's episode is called "Whistling Past the Great uh, Cemetery." Whistling past the cemetery. Wait, is, it the, um, is it the dryer or the washer? Or that's probably a thunderstorm rolling in. Um, the thumping. Mm-hmm. It's a play on a well-known phrase, just like "Tripping on Legends" is a play on. I had to explain what that was several times. Yeah, to, um, over the past month. Um, it's fun. what exactly that meant, but that's okay. Um, but do you know what the expression means? And I would love to hear from anyone in the audience if you know what, what the expression means. What? Um, it's a play on, tri uh, whistling past the cemetery is a, an expression, it's a play on an expression called, um, whistling past the graveyard, right? Um... What's the difference between a graveyard and a cemetery? I'm glad you asked. I was actually going to ask you if you knew the difference is between it, a cemetery is it like one's and a older? graveyard. No, it's actually not. Um, a graveyard is some is a a, a place where you bury people. Mm -hmm. That really? is yes, <laughs> that is connected to a church. Oh, or and another the religious is not. And a cemetery is not. Uh, although the, the expressions are used pretty much as the same and interchangeably, um, there actually is a difference between a cemetery and a graveyard, and it is the presence of a church. I don't know if it stands um, for other um, religious places as well. Like, I'm not sure if there's a cemetery next to a synagogue, whether it's also a graveyard. Did you research that for tonight's episode? What'd you, what'd you say? <laughs> Did you research that for tonight's episode? Research what? Exactly. Okay, so you've done no research for but, tonight's okay, episode. Okay, but, but I know, I kind of, I might know that, like, something about the phrase was so whistling past the graveyard. Okay, so, what do you um, think it, so wait I, a minute, wait, first of all, how do you know what it might mean? Like, um, how do you even well, know to... because, like, whistling, I know that whistling, um, like, like, JC told me, like, a really long time ago that... Um, and his mom, like, he was whistling on a call, and his mom told him to stop, and I was like, why does your mom not let you whistle? And he was like, he said that, um, whistling, like, attracts bad spirits. Whistling attracts bad spirits. That's what I heard. Okay. And so, and, and remember, we remember we had the, the whistling from, um, we had the whistling on the, um, uh, theater episode. Do you remember why you don't whistle in a theater? Which theater? Why you don't... We're checking the volume right now. <laughs> On Midnight Dot. FM. Where? It's always midnight. Um, I think that might have something to do with the quality of the connection and the volume that we've got going on right now. Because I don't seem to see these things changing at all. So, unfortunately, we'll try to work this out as we go. 
Um, but there seems to be something a little bit off with that, but we don't want to kill the rest of the episode. Um, first of all, we should say that we are back. Yeah. We have to take a step back for a sec because we're so out of uh, use of how to do this that we can't, um, we, we forgot to promote the show. So we forgot to say, do you remember all the platforms that we're on? Um, See, we're we, really out of practice, so we, we didn't have uh, to... On Facebook.com mm-hmm. slash backslash Shipping on Legends, uh, we have a TikTok that we're working on. We have an Instagram that's spooky tripping. Spooky yeah. tripping. Um, don't we have, like, a Twitter? Mm-hmm. We have a Twitter I don't know the name of. Um, yeah. That's all I remember. I didn't hear any of that because I was doing this. Hello, 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 hello. Well, you just made it quieter. Oh, that's fine. We're we like we kind of just like restart the whole episode. We'll do it up here. Um, We're already like nine minutes in. Whatever. Whoops. People respect that we are. Hello, hello. So I guess we have to get like really close. So the good news is is that you're gonna have to you're gonna be able to grab the microphone. Yeah. Whenever you want to grab the microphone. But I'm going to... Hooray! Hooray, okay. So, um, welcome back. Sorry. We are trying to, we're trying to get things back up and running again. We're still a little rusty. Um, we've been doing a lot, uh, oddly enough, even though we haven't been live on the show, and we've been doing a lot on our social media platforms. Like Ella said, we do have the, um, we do have the website, which I am posting a lot of things on, especially during these summer months. And that tells you kind of everything of what we're doing and what's on our mind. And I've been publishing uh, other articles, like reposting articles. And that uh, is at trippingatlegends.com. You can follow us on Twitter, at Spooky Balzano. On Instagram, we are at Spooky Tripping. Mm-hmm. I knew that one. You knew that one. <laughs> and, of course, you know, you can get the podcast on anywhere where you actually get um, your, your, your podcast, right? Podcasts are getting even bigger now. I've been talking to people over the summer. I've been doing a lot of true crime ones myself and talking to people. And it seems even more and more people are listening to podcasts. Wherever you get yours, ours are primarily on iTunes, Google Play, things like that. You can also get it on Google Play. Uh, Stitcher, everywhere but Spotify. Should, should we try to be on Spotify? We, well, it, that's a process because we have videos. And Spotify doesn't allow videos. Oh, or it doesn't allow, like, independent videos, because Devin's been watching videos on it all along. Spotify. Um, but there's also, um, you know, a call out there for people to review it. Uh, we've gotten a few good reviews lately, actually, and it's encouraging, but it, you know, it helps us kind of figure out uh, what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, and so we can connect to you any way we want, <laughs> or any way you want to get to us, so that we can kind of... Taylor Archer, she's now taken over complete control over everything. Um, so I can't read. Tonight especially, uh, I, it, there's a call out um, to have the people who are watching us on Facebook Live <clears throat> um, connect with us on their stories, right? And these don't have to be personal experiences. When we get into like the bulk of the episode and what it actually is, uh, things are going to start going off in your head. Bells should be ringing. Uh, it should remind you of something that happens in your town or something you've heard of or even a famous story that you've heard. And we highly encourage you to call in to connect with us on your ghost cemetery ritual. Uh, and the number is 813-418-6822. Uh, and of course, it's also in the chat room as well if people want to uh, hit it up. So, um, Colleen says, whistling past the cemetery has something to do with showing a lack of fear when one is actually frightened. Oh. Which is, I'm not going to say JC's a bad influence in your life, but maybe just his mom is. Yes. (laughs) Whistling past the graveyard, so it's actually whistling past the graveyard, not the cemetery, is an expression which means to show fear or to pretend to show no fear when you are in the midst of something that's supposed to be really scary. And the idea of it was when you were going through, so churches were the center of most towns, right? So if you wanted to get from one end of the town to the other end of the town, 
you could cut your time in half if you cut through the graveyard and went through the church's property. But of course, there was always the fear that there were ghosts around. And the best way to keep the ghosts at bay, to keep the ghosts away from you, was to whistle. So you were whistling because you were scared to keep the things away, so it became an expression which meant um, if you want to pretend as if nothing is going on, it's just called whistling past a cemetery or whistling past a graveyard. But I thought it would be a really cool um, expression to use for a new project that I'm working on. Oh, great. What is that supposed to mean, oh, great? You're supposed to be encouraging. Yay! I can't believe it. I'm so excited for you. Well, this involves you, too, because oh, I would love to haul your ass out to several of these different locations. But, what are you going to say? Oh, I'm looking. Okay. But me, it's not good luck when a Ouija board falls on you. Oh, shit. But, me being me, you know that I can't just say what's going on. I have to give the evolution of the idea. Mm -hmm. So, how did this story come about? Um, yeah, how did it? Tell me. <laughs> Tell me everything. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked, Al. <laughs> um, so, I was editing up uh, a travel log for when, back in 2017, we did... Uh, tripping on legends, a road trip out to North Carolina, and then we ended up in Indiana. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. No, you, you don't remember it because you course. weren't there. I know, but you told me a lot about it. Okay. Remember the thing with the Did you devil? think I was going to hit you just then? No. <laughs> oh, okay. The devil circle, and then you, it was like a cling pam or cling pot or whatever. It's on your YouTube. Clang and fly. Clang and fly. Clang and fly. That one. Um, while we were doing that, <clears throat> we decided to go to... Um, a place known as a Hundred Step Cemetery, and I argue that it's the most well-documented haunting wow. in the history of the United States, or at least the most well-documented ghostly folklore. And people will argue with me on that, and they'll say something like Amityville or the Stanley Hotel, and, and what I tell them is those are hauntings. Those aren't haunted legends. This happened to be one of the most haunted legends in the country because of its geography and when it was popular. So it was, became famous because it was in Indiana, and uh, Harold Brunvard, who really invented the word urban legend, was teaching at that university nearby. And so he was gathering and archived all of these different accounts of it, and so it became very famous. While I was doing that write-up, not only was I getting all nostalgic, because it was the scariest place I've ever been. The Hundred Step Cemetery? Hundred Step Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And it was not that scary at all. But it was <laughs> ridiculously, we were, our, we were the most frightened. If you've watched the video uh, of us at 100 Step Cemetery, we are scared crapless. And we spend about five minutes there before we, we move on to something else. Um, oh, and people. by that, I mean we go home. There's 10 people. I'm with you. Um, in doing research for that, do you remember the legend of that at all? Maybe... Okay, so... If you climb the 100 steps, something happens is all I know. I, don't you die or something? Don't you die! <laughs> um, yeah, so 100 Step Cemetery is you, you, you climb up the stairs at exactly midnight. You have to count the steps, and you have to count 100 steps. And if you don't count 100 steps, you're in trouble. But if you do, Yikes. and you get to the top, the original caretaker of the cemetery will come out to talk to you, and he will tell you the exact moment and way you're going to die. Okay. Okay? He then disappears. You walk back down the steps. And if you don't count 100 steps on the way down, the last step opens up and sucks you to hell. Okay. Okay. Um, that's kind of the legend that, that's going on there. And so I was writing that legend out. And I thought, what a great legend. Like, what a great story. What a great um, unifying thing. And you can imagine all these people, which is really what was scaring us that night, all these people flocking to this, this really, really rural, out-of-the-way place. All you can hear were the chirping of frogs. I think we must have killed about 10,000 frogs that night driving up to it because they're all hopping on the road. No lights, nothing nearby, 
and we're walking up these with the all, all the other lights we had because we couldn't even like have the phones really. It was like one phone and a flashlight, and the light from the camera was the only light. It was a really freaky place. You could imagine generations of people because he's documenting this in the 60s. So we're talking 60s, 80s, 2000s. We're talking at least three generations for it because people were already telling the story. And I thought, what a great... We do that all the time. What? We make up stories about our cemeteries. And when we make up these stories about our cemeteries, it is kind of... I know I put it as the first version, um, but they're really the, the quintessential like version of a legend trip. When I think of legend trip, when I think of going out and trying to experience a haunting... It's really two things that the majority of people do, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people aren't going to go to the Singing River and read poetry to try to get, you know, the, the Calusa witches to, or the Calusa ghosts to, to, to swim up to you. Um, they swim up to you? Well, they're supposed to. They didn't do that to you when you were there? You totally missed it out. They did it when we were there. Sorry. You're really not going to uh, read... Dr. Seuss and have the, the, the ghost pants walk across the road. <laughs> but cemeteries and ghost lights spark people's imaginations. So you have a place like Tomoka, you have a place like the Oviedo Lights, where people d drove uh, to see this, right? And people would fill a car up to go and look at these lights. And in the same way, I always feel... And again, I've got to I've got to tip my hat to to um, to, to Brunvard in, in that there's this big book of urban legends over there. It's always it's in the living room. You can always see it from no matter where you are in the house. It seems. Where is it? Over there in the bookcase. Which one? And there's a story in there about these girls who were having a slumber party, and the girls who were having a slumber party challenge each other to go and sit on the grave of someone who has recently died. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to, if you do that, when you, when you close your eyes and you, and you sleep, the person, the boy who's supposed to fall in love with you and who your husband is going to be will be revealed to you. And That is a terrible idea. Why? Because, what's the moral of the story? <laughs> Don't fall Don't fall up. They go out there. And they say to prove that you were actually at the grave, you have to you have to put this spike in the ground. Oh, I know this. All right, and go she ahead. Puts, I and, was going to take the story. And um, no, I only know the ending. So she does it right, and nothing happens, right? So when she goes to walk away, she feels something pulling on like the edge of her dress, right? And she starts like screaming, right? And then she dies of fright. But the thing was that she. The thing that she in the ground, it was on the edge of her skirt. It was holding her. It was holding the, her skirt down. I know that from uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. That's what I know from. No, you don't. You know that yes, from me because I no, told you that story. No, no, it's in Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I'm pretty sure. It's in something. I read to, it. We're gonna have to check that. I, I I'm read gonna it. I check I, your facts on that. I read it. Um, so I'm thinking about the hundred steps. I've got that because it's always it's one of my favorite urban legend stories of, of the girl with dying on the on the grave, and the hundred step cemetery also has. This uh, other haunting that's right next to it. Actually, this one is in hell. Brazil called the Gates of Hell. Demon summoned by flashing lights if you see your name. <laughs> <laughs> so, as Ella's reading my notes, really not being able to make sense of them. No, you can understand. summon a demon at the Gates of Hell. It's, so it's this bridge. Wow, really? Uh, where a train goes over it and is under, in the underpass where the cars can go. You go there and you honk your horn, uh, or I'm sorry, you flash your lights three times. If you flash your lights three times, a demon is supposed to, exp like, is supposed to come out from underneath the, um, uh, underneath the bridge and haul you to hell, right? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't haul you to hell, then uh, you can, when you drive through, if you look as you're driving through the tunnel, if you see your name in the graffiti, because it's always being spray painted and then painting over and spray painted again. If you do that and you see your name, um, it means that you're going to die within the year. Okay. So if you survive the demon, you still get to. And that 
reminded me of a New England legend. New England Sauter. Uh, which I will not mention by name, but if you're from New England, um, and if you've solved Spooky South Why Ghost, and even see? Tripping on Legends. Uh, Tripping on Legends. You said, we say Legends. something. Why can't? Why can't you say it? Because. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because um, this is a really well-known cemetery legend that also involves taking your car to this cemetery and flashing your lights. So anyone who is from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut, you know what I'm talking about. You know the cemetery I'm Can talking you just about. Tell me? I'll tell you off air. Why? Um, because people do this so much that it's led to a lot of trespassing in the cemetery, yeah. uh, a lot of graveyard damage. I'm sorry, cemetery damage, um, and a general nuisance. So, for example, we posted that on Spooky South Coast maybe like three years ago, three or four years ago, and we were immediately asked, Tim Weinsberg wrote the article, we were immediately asked to take the article down because people were already like responding to it and then like then going out to the cemetery and the cops were having a hard time. And it, it, it struck me that this would be a really good topic for a book. And I... I immediately went on Amazon. I immediately started doing research to find whether anyone has ever written a book solely about rituals that we do in cemeteries to connect with the dead. They are the first level of legend tripping. Before you learn how to drive a car, before you and your friends can go out, there is that... You know you can go to Mary's grave and tap it three times, and she'll she suck you into and, hell. And she'll she'll appear and talk to you. Or mm. if you go to the cemetery and you take a rock from the cemetery home with you, you know it'll be cursed, and mm, you will, and your dogs will all die, just like the devil's tree. The dogs will die. A lot of these come from cemetery knowledge. They come from the idea of we put our dead over there. We want our dead over there. We don't want them to be part of the living. We want to be able to go and remember them. But there's a seduction to a cemetery. There is a lure to it. And it begins when we're kids, right? Um, Do you find that your friends talk about cemeteries or want to go to a cemetery or anything like that? No. (laughs) I like that dramatic pause as she's leaning... Uh, uh, no. Really, you don't? No, not except for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, like, you know, goes love and trip with Okay, well, let me just say... No one, no one, no one in my friend group is just like, I want to go to a cemetery today. I think that might be a Florida thing. Because we don't, at least in uh, Cape, Cor- Cape Coral, what where we are, North Fort Myers, it's the computer. Oh. Um, Fort Myers, like, Naples even... Charlotte County, there aren't, that was crazy, there yeah. aren't a lot of above ground cemeteries, right? There's not a lot of burial grounds. And so it's not like other parts of Florida and then, of course, New England and other places where cemeteries are a very um, common site and part of the community. Do you even know the cemetery in Cape Coral? No. No. There's one right on, uh, right on, uh, what do you call it? The where I used to work and you live street. Chiquita. Chiquita, yes, yeah. sorry, there's a Chiquita. <laughs> there's a cemetery right on Chiquita, right on, right on Chiquita and Pineal. Well, don't tell them where I live. I don't think they're going to walk the streets off of Chiquita where there are 87 streets trying to find you. Um... But other places, that's our introduction. You have not... (laughs) I've made out in cemeteries when I was a kid, a teenager. We played in them. Um, We posted the picture of people uh, uh, in uh, Safety Harbor. We used to have picnics at the cemetery. Remember when Nana was here last week, we talked about how beautiful it was. People just go to Mount Auburn Cemetery in Cambridge and like hang out. That's a pretty weird place for a hangout. 
But it's not, is what I'm saying. There, in, a, in the culture that's not here, other people, there's a reverence, but also kind of a, an allure to cemeteries. Whether it's to freak people out, right? Uh, I know of a lot of people who, they got their starts as writers going into a cemetery at night and writing. Like, they would only write in, in a cemetery at night. Um, the, the Allman Brothers, right? We've talked about this before. The Allman Brothers used to practice in a cemetery at night. And from where they played, you could see the, the names of all the women in their songs. Disturbing the dead. So I thought, this would be a really great book. Like, explore why we do this, and then go all across the country and try to find similar stories that fit different themes and explore them, which is why we would love to hear from you at 813-418-6822. That's 813-418-6822. So if you have, if you have a, uh, a cemetery legend. Now, this is not, there's a guy who haunts the cemetery who does this. This is more of you as the living. Go to the cemetery, you do something... And by doing that, you make the spirits come out, or you connect with the spirits, or you somehow become part of the story yourself. So if you have something like that, please give us a call. As, we, as I'm waiting for you guys to give me yours, I have assembled seven, seven of the best non-Florida ones I could find. And I want you to decide, and the audience can kind of contribute Fact to this as well. Or- um, you, she lived by the Allen Brothers. That's awesome. Um, I was actually heading out to Macon, Georgia this this weekend, and that kind of I have to go to your stupid play. So you killed it. Ha-ha. Um, I might still do it without you though. So if anyone's w- willing to go to Macon, Georgia with me this weekend, let me know. Um, all right, I'm going to give you seven stories, and I want you to tell me all of these are real. Across America, across America. Across, all across this great country of ours, stories that involve um, tripping on a cemetery, or what we're now going to call whistling past the cemetery. So these are all different things you can do, weird, freaky stuff, and I want you to rate them. Okay. All right? On how scary it is? Yes. Uh, or how what? creepy, how willing you would be to like, I want to do that one. I want to do that one right now. Wait, so so how about if I do one that's creepy? Yeah. And then one that's if I want if how much I would want to do it. Well, wouldn't you want to go there if it's the creepiest? No. Alright, you're making this way too complex. We're gonna do a five scale, five star scale, but we're gonna do headstones instead of stars. Five. So I'm gonna give you the story and you give me headstones one to five. If I wanna do it. Five's the best. Right. If you wanna do if you would do it, if it's creepy, if you like the story. Gut reaction on this. Don't overthink it. The first one, this is actually the very first thing I wrote about on Tripping on Legends. Way back in the day. Like 10 years ago. You know this one? Well, I know that it's near. Well, you have a little folder in your room. Oh. I was like, you have a little thing um, on Hill. Coon Hill. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I have a folder labeled Coon Hill. Yeah, what is that about? Tell me later. What's Coon Hill? Just tell me later. Okay. Um, the first one, it takes place in Iowa City. Where's that? In Iowa. Whoa, really? Yes. Oh Do you God. know where Iowa is? It's in the Midwest. Wait, sh- 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 is Iowa the one that's shaped like this? Sure. So, this uh, this Oakland Cemetery... Uh, is kind of part of it's kind of part of the uh, University of Iowa there is a, 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 a an angel statue mm-hmm. right and this angel statue is totally part of the culture of the campus okay so it's said that if you go to that campus and you go to that uh, Mary um you are not a true co-ed. So you're not a true uh, student. Now, these are all... This is wicked sexist. I know you're going to flip out. Mm-hmm. You are not a true female co-ed at the University of Iowa true if you female? are not kissed. If you're okay, not a true okay. student. No, you said true female? Co-ed. Co-ed. 
You have to be a female co uh, cooperative education. In other words, you're not a student. Mm -hmm. Co ed means boys and girls, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, you must be kissed underneath the angel statue for you to be considered a true student of the University of Iowa. If you're a female. If you're a female. Now, interesting. Whoever is buried at this angel, or whoever this angel is dedicated to, must have something connected to Halloween, because all these, the rest of these are kind of connected to Halloween. If you are kissed in the moonlight by this angel, you will die. By the with... angel? No, near the angel. Oh, you said the angel. by the angel. I was like, uh, what? Um, you will die within six months. Okay. So. Don't have, don't kiss the angel. Or don't kiss by the angel. Um, if you are by the angel and you are innocent. Do you know what I mean by innocent? Okay. If you are innocent, That's probably um, not. you'll actually change the color of the statue. The statue will go uh, a, sh a lighter shade of black. It's black? It's kind of blackish gray. Okay. If you touched... The angel on Halloween, you will die within seven months. If you just touch the statue on Halloween, you're going to die in seven months. Um, if you kiss the statue, you will die. Automatically? Automatically. You'll I die do. Why would someone go? Before mm, you get out of the yeah. cemetery. Some go, All right, mm, some, yeah, hey. I want that angel. Well, that, that's kind of the essence of legend tripping, right? So it's like, okay, will you go and kiss the statue? If you kiss the statue, you're supposed to die. Would you go and kiss the statue? <laughs> yeah, but I don't. So want then there some, you go. Like, I don't that's want what, some sweet marble in my mouth. Well, I mean, I don't want to get too much into that's the disgusting. sociological aspects of this, but these all the, all of these legends. Do you know how many germs I must have? Why would it have germs if not all of people are kissing it? You've never kissed a building before? All of these have to do with the sexuality of women. Uh, have to do with, essentially, you're sending your daughter off to college and she's going there to have sex and learn about liberal ideas. Great. And so she needs to be protected. Great. Um, every Halloween, the statue gets a shade darker because it's feeding off of the people that it's killed. Hmm. Like Holly Tower. Like Holly Tower. Well, it reminded me of Holly Tower in that it's also a place where you go if you want good luck and all this other stuff, which reminded me of the Holly Tower and the fact that that is a graveyard or it's at least a memorial. The, I mean, the people are buried there. Their, their mausoleum is right there. It's, it's their mausoleum. And people go to it and touch the tower for good luck, touch the, good ta the tower if they want a good, uh, good grade, after games, things like that. Um, so that after is games. Why do they go after games? like in celebration, like we won. Let's honor them by touching their graves. <laughs> um, would you go there? One to five headstones. What would you say? And you guys can feel free to uh, to vote in the in the chat as well. Um, one because one headstone. You you're not going to kiss till you're forty. So let's um, say, yeah. In theory, when you're forty, would you go and do this? Um. No, I think one out of five headstones. Um, because that is extremely sexist. I don't want that angel being sexist to me. And also, um, if if you not were, during Gay Pride Month, Dad. <laughs> yeah, like, and if um, if it was like, if someone were to like tell me like, kiss the statue, um, it is in the middle of coronavirus. The co oh, actually, you're you're talking when I'm forty, right? Yeah. Um, that has a lot of germs on it, so no thank you. Okay, all right. Do you want to read what Jeremy said? Because it's, it's connected mm -hmm. to, uh, to Let's something. see if I can read today. Mount Auburn Cemetery is one of my favorite places in the world. I agree. Forest Hill Cemetery in Jamaica Plain is pretty cool, too. And I'm pretty sure uh, I saw a ghost at Forest Hill. Sorry. Me and a couple friends were picnicking by Lake Hi Hib Hibiscus. Hi 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 Hibiscus. That, and at Forest Hills, as we were eating, a Victorian man in a stovepipe hat with a walking stick came strolling along the periphery of the pond. We thought it was just a cool reenactor. He smiled and nodded at us and walked behind a big tree. We all waited for him to emerge from behind the tree. He did not. We all got up and walked around the tree. Nothing. No one there. 
I've never seen any ghosts at Mount Auburn, though, and I don't know any ghost stories associated with it. And that's a really interesting idea, is that um, Mount Auburn is a beautiful cemetery. It's said to be the model, the roadmap, if you will, for Central Park in New York. Um, it was really the first of its kind to bring this, let's not make a cemetery, this dark, bleak place, but let's make it a beautiful, flowing nature, and like... Everything is one, and I mean, it absolutely is gorgeous. What do we all, What else do we know about Mount Auburn Cemetery? Um, Dad wants me to sprinkle his ashes there on the opposite side of the cemetery of his grandparents. No, or his, no, his parents. no, no. Yeah, that's what you said. I never that said on the said. opposite that side. That's what you said. Of, anyway, that's what you said. It's the going thing for years that I want to be cremated. I want to be spread in Mount Auburn. So, but I think that because of its beauty, there's no. Okay, let's assume for a second that ghost stories come out of our fear of things, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because there are plenty of there are plenty of ghosts that could be at Mount Auburn, but it's so beautiful and it's so peaceful. It's hard to think of anyone being there and not feeling at peace. I guess is a good way to say it. Whereas a lot of these, there's uh, this story associated with it, that story associated with it. The ground was used for that. I think Mount Auburn is a really good example of there don't seem to be any ghost stories because people are at peace there. It really is a, a beautiful place. So anyone who wants to uh, start the GoFundMe for my cremation, because you can't actually spread ashes at Mount Auburn Cemetery. So do you remember how you have to spread my ashes? I have to do it very discreetly. Do you remember specifically how you're supposed to do it? Mm. You're supposed to. I told him she has to. Sp- I told her and my son they have to spread my ashes Shawshank Redemption style. So they have to essentially put me in their pockets and like shoot me out their shoes. All right, <clears throat> are you ready for the next one? So that one didn't impress you at all. No. And I would never do it. What's Nolo? Do you know what Nolo is? What? What's Nolo? Stop looking at my notes. <laughs> I don't know what Nolo is. You should. We are. Now traveling down to the bayou. Going to good old New Orleans. Oh, yeah. uh, And the St. Louis Cemetery in New Orleans, which is said to be... Wait, 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 let me guess. It's something about voodoo. You are 100% correct. It has to do with voodoo. So uh, St. Louis Cemetery is said to be one of the most beautiful above-ground cemeteries in the nation. If you know anything about New Orleans, the burials, much like Florida, but even more so, they can't be below ground in a lot of places because the water table is so high. So instead, they bury people above the ground. And next week, we're going to do a whole episode on this kind of thing. Yeah, there's some um, in St. Augustine. Some in St. Augustine, some in um, but that's mostly Key because, West. That's mostly because they didn't have any room. That's because there were so many dead people during that one thing that I don't remember the name of. Spanish flu? Probably. Okay. Um, But there is one cemetery in particular, one grave in particular, that draws a lot of people's attention. And that is the voodoo queen, Marie Laveau. It looks like... I know. Don't don't worry about my handwriting. (laughs) I I can understand it. It's actually (laughs) quite beautiful. Um, So the voodoo queen, Marie Laveau, uh, she was famous from in from New Orleans. Actually, she's she's mentioned in the BuzzFeed Paranormal when they go to New Is Orleans. Is that when they do as, the voodoo lady? Uh, yeah, she talks about it. I think they actually might even go into St. Louis Cemetery. I'm not quite sure. I don't. I remember they go into a cemetery, and uh, her grave, which is once again one of these above ground mausoleums, is famous for people um, conducting voodoo rituals. So one of the things, when we think of voodoo, we often think of this black art, you know, weird chicken thing. Um, what's chicken that? thing? No, like, chicken like, like thing. cutting chickens. Uh, like, and it's kind of, you know, what we've been kind of taught. And there are those elements to voodoo. But she was, uh, Marie was a, a protector of the, the average person, the average Joe, um, in New Orleans, right? So she, people would go to her for advice. They would go to her for spells. Uh, and she would 
Like, we often think of voodoo as a dark art. She was the light side of that dark art, if you will. She was almost a folk hero in that town. When she died, that didn't change, right? Mm -hmm. So people go to her grave and they continue to cast spells. And it's said that if you go to her grave and you draw three X's on, uh, with chalk on any part of her building, any part of her like little mausoleum, she will actually appear in spirit form and help you with your voodoo spell. Mm-hmm. Or maybe just make you some chicken feet, chicken legs like we made. Chicken duck woman. Yeah. Chicken duck woman. Um, would you do that? Of course. If I was ever performing some kind of voodoo spell, I would do it. Well, I mean, would you do it just to try to talk to her? It's like yeah. you essentially conjure sure. her by making those three X's Sure, man, on. whatever. i do it. Five out of five. Five? Five out of five. Yeah, I would do it. Okay, but not even just how you do it. Do you like it? Do you think it's a spooky story? Do you think it's a good story? Well, it's not spooky. Does it remind you of anything else you've been told where you, like, you mark up the voodoo grave? Mama Juju. I'm kidding. <laughs> Now, if you could go there and make the three X's and Voodoo Mama Juju would appear, <laughs> that would definitely be something we're going on this weekend. This weekend? No, I'm saying we. I would take you this weekend there right now if Voodoo Mama Juju was there. Um, I don't, actually, like four out of five because it's not scary to me. That's so scary. it's one of those things where I, I, I feel it's so. Spirit. I feel it's so connected to the community that I'm not even sure it would even fall into the legend tripping thing. Um, why don't you read Rita's comments? St. Patrick Cemetery in... I intentionally did it to see if she could pronounce it. Natick. Natick. Is pre- pretty and peaceful. We snuck my... She's not from Massachusetts. Go ahead. We snuck my mom's dog's ashes and buried them at the top where my mom is buried. We snuck so well, we were successful at burying her dog with her. We felt like mom helped us. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. I love that. Buried I don't think I've, I've never been to St. Patrick's Cemetery. I tried, used to try to avoid Natick. We were taught it was the bad part of the state. Mm-hmm. I don't believe that, though. All right, next one. Next one. I tried, and I tried. Actually, I tried um, to get, uh, what's your name, to... Um, uh, Clarissa Vasquez to get me a picture of the St. Louis Cemetery. But she could not go there. She could not make her way to New Orleans. Or she not, at least not that part. In much the same way, uh, Deanna is out in Utah right now. And I tried to get her to go to Ogden, Utah. Do you know where Utah is? I know where Utah is. I know where Utah is. All right, go ahead. It is the top left of the four corners. And what are the other four corners? Have you um, been to Utah? No. Wait, know, Col- are you sure you haven't been to Utah? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Um, Colorado is the top me. right. I know that. I think Arizona is the bottom left, and I think that New Mexico is the bottom right. Uh, th- I, that sounds right to me. I'm not. I'm. I'm not the sure only though, subject the I'm, too, the but... only subject I tank on trivia pursuit is geography, <laughs> but it's around those all those states. It's near there. So. But well, that is geography. That's what I just said. I'm horrible at geography. Oh. Um, I think we all tank on All right, one. so this is Florence Grange um, in the Ogden Cemetery, and it's known as, I'm sorry, it's Flo- yeah, Florence Grange is the woman's name, and it's known as the Ghost of Flo's Grave. Ooh. And not Progressive Flo. So the story goes that one night Flo, who was a real person, so you can actually find evidence of this and all this information in there. Um, she died. She was hit by a car. She mm, died. While waiting for her boyfriend. Mm. Moral, Moral story, story. Don't, don't fall, fall in love. love. Um, so she was hit by a car while waiting for her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Now. That sounds basic. Okay. <laughs> Have you often... Do you know people who often get hit by a car while waiting for their... No, I don't, but... Okay. Now, the story goes that uh, <laughs> she had told her boyfriend, uh, because of the fact that they weren't supposed to be together, to not turn his lights on so that the father wouldn't see... Oh, did he boy. hit her with his car? And so because his lights weren't on... He hit her? He hit her with that's the car so and killed her. So tell me that's not like... <laughs> that- 
like you're gonna want to break up with him well she's also dead that's the joke that's the joke that's the joke um however however if you're looking for love in all the right places in the cemetery you can go to ogden utah you can find flo's grave you can drive up to it with your car Mm -hmm. flash your lights three times right and flo will appear <laughs> okay. And Flo. And what will Flo do? Will will come up from behind her grave, and some people said that she will either fall in love with you. Okay. Right? Would you kiss a ghost in that circumstance? No. Okay. Or you will have good luck, and you'll find like your person that you're going to fall in love with within six months, but only if she comes out and whispers the name of the person to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to say three out of five, because okay. if I really wanted to, I would do it. I don't see why I would want to. Um, okay, so all of these I want you to imagine, if we were to go there during the day, that would not be a big deal. That would not be scary. Right? At all. But would you drive out to this cemetery in the middle of the night, right, flash your lights three times, and wait for a woman to come out from behind her grave come up to you Mm -hmm. because that's the thing of it like we can say all these things i can say to you right now let's go to indian spring cemetery and and, you know i just took a group there a few weeks ago and we're walking around and i'm not sure i think they were underwhelmed with it because they haven't been there at night and they haven't like experienced some of that stuff they haven't seen those shadows and they haven't seen the weird lights would you do this in the dark so all these i want you to imagine doing them like your friends dare you to go do it doing them in the middle of the night Waiting in your car for a woman to appear behind a grave uh, headstone, walk over to you and whisper the name of your beloved in your ear. Did you also? Didn't you also say that um she might fall in love with you? Well, not with your personality. <laughs> that's so rude. Um, cause I'm saying cause like, how do I word this? Um, see, it would it would be a higher rating if the thing was that like she fell in love with you and then she dragged you down to hell. To be together forever. Okay. Or drive so, you into her grave. To be together forever. But don't you think that part of what's scary about these and part of why they become legend tripping, urban legend things is that there is a fear element. So it's, oh yeah, you're telling me right now in this house, you know, with me right by your side, that like I would have no problem going there unless I was dragged to hell. But in actuality, we are scared. You are scared of the dark. We are scared of being out in, in a spooky situation, right? And so doing that and doing a ritual that's actually going to have this woman appear out of nowhere and come over and whisper to you is going to be a lot more intimidating than I think you're giving it credit for. Yeah, but I wouldn't, like, cower in fear and pee my pants. I would pee my pants at the fact that she would want me to fall in love with someone. All All right. <laughs> I am going to give some of the details of this next one. Wait, so how many headstones? Bully. Um, like three or four. Like three point five. I would give this one five, personally. 5. How, would you guys, how would you guys listening? That's not what scary. What would you give this one? But, well, it, does it, does it, is there anything about like what she does if she falls in love with you? Or she falls in love with you? Isn't that scary enough? No. Okay. All right. Um, Let her live her life. Oh my god, my nose is so itchy. I'm going to kiss a fool, like Flo, at her grave. All right, <laughs> the next one I'm going to give a few details with, but I'm going um, to use it as a way to promote the website because I posted the full story for this one well, that's not fair. on the website at www.trippingonlegends.com. It's actually a repost from the mirror. Um, one of our Instagram followers sh- shot me this. I can't remember. I think it's uh, South Florida... Um, South Florida Paranormal Investigators. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm totally on Instagram. I can't remember who it was exactly who shot it to me. I did. Uh, I will give you credit, though, in the book. Definitely. Um, this is a story. This is another case of murder and love in cemeteries. Murder. All right. St. Michael's Church in Chagford. Chagford. Chagford, Dartmoor, England. I love how England places always have, like, seven names. Right. All right. Are you ready for this story? Probably not. All right. 
So I want you to tell me, this is, this is more of when you're 40, Great. Um, when you're 40, whether or not you would, um, you would get married at this. 40, 50, 80, whenever you're going to Mar- get married. What? Married? Married at a cemetery? Well, at the church, with a, which has a graveyard <laughs> oh. that we now know. I was like, A graveyard uh-huh. connected to it. I was like, uh-huh. So would you get married at this beautiful St. Michael the Archangel Church in Dartmoor, England? Right? Okay. Absolutely beautiful. However, in 1680, uh, 1641, a man by the name of Mar- a woman by the name of Mary Witten was murdered. Murder. On the steps of the cemetery on her wedding day. Sucks. It does suck. Almost as much as getting married. Hey. Oh, so. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, don't go. mess with things. That, that was all your right. fault. <clears throat> so the story goes that uh, Mary was set to. I'm looking at all these Marys, huh? Mary. Ma- Mary, Mary. Mm-hmm. We've already talked about that. Mary was set to marry another man. Mary was However, Mary. Mary, Mary, why you bugging? She ditched her potential suitor and found another man to love. Mm -hmm. As the wedding ceremony was going on, he crept up upon the church. The the guy that she's supposed to marry? The one she ditched, Mm -hmm. right? And as she and her husband, her new husband, came walking down the steps, he shot her dead. Red blood Bursting out like a flower, they say. Don't, like a flower. T- don't tell me how. What? I don't want to hear that. Well, it's a white wedding dress, and she got shot, so it's gonna like, like a I'm flower that's growing gonna have, on her chest. I'm assuming that's gonna have something to do with it. I, you are so wicked smart. I'm telling you, girl. Um. So, since that day, every marriage <clears throat> that has happened at this church. So for the last has ended in divorce. For the last almost four hundred years, has ended in the wife dying within five years. This is the legend, of course. The wife dying within five years of being married there. Except for those who perform the ritual. And the ritual is after you have been been married and you're walking out of the church. You walk automatically, so before you go to the reception, before you start... I don't know if people in England listen to, like, Celebrate good times. Come on. We are family. I was doing kind of like the wedding mix. The wedding mix. Um, I'm not sure if people in England do that. But before you can go to the reception, before you can do anything, um, before they even throw rice, any bride who gets married at St. Michael's Church has to go directly from the church, across the graveyard, find Mary's grave, and put red flowers on her headstone before they're allowed to leave, and then they will be allowed to live happily ever after, except for the fact that they've got to be married. (laughs) Would you... No! I didn't mean to do that. I know, that's fine. Would you get married there and conduct that ritual? Well, that's too much work. Isn't what do you mean? even that pretty? It must be worth it if people have been getting married there for four hundred years. I mean, well, like if it's like really beautiful, then I would do it. But oh, am I going to travel all the way to England for my wedding? How do you know you're not marrying an English person? <laughs> They're funny. Why would what? What are you anti-English? <laughs> Wee wee. Re- re- really during Pride Month? <laughs> you're going to ditch the English? All right. Anyway. All right. So you're saying one out of four. There's you're just way too much four. going on. It's way too uh, hard to do it, that. Way it, one out of five. Yeah, if it's really, like, beautiful and stuff, and I, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's where I want to have my wedding, then obviously I'd, I'd do the ritual. Ella, I love you. I want to marry you at Dartmoor. Come, come with me to Dartmoor. <laughs> well, we should be married in St. Michael's talk like that, I'm I don't know you. what a Dartmoor accent sounds like. So if you have any Dartmoorians uh, in the audience, I'm sorry if I offended you with, uh, with that horrible impre- accent. It wasn't terrible. It just might be a terrible Dartmoorian mm-hmm. accent, which sounds a lot more like a Star Trek character than it does an actual place. <clears throat> All right, so low score for that. Stop. Well, not very low. But like... Next one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where are you going on vacation this year? 
Arkansas. Oh, okay. Where did you think I was going? Uh, Alabama. No. <laughs> no. Why would we go to Alabama? What's in Alabama? What's Sweet in Alabama? I don't know. Alabama. Wait, I thought I had an Arkansas one here. Because I remember spelling Arkansas and looking back and being Arkansas. like, is that how you spell it? All right, so this is cemetery. Why is this one Kansas, but this one is not Arkansas? America, explain. Explain why Arkansas. All right, I might have to change this a little bit. Uh, okay. This one might. No, that's in Georgia. I can't remember. Anyway. It doesn't really matter. It really does. So this is Cemetery Mountain in Munford, Alabama. Mm-hmm. Already, would you want to go to Alabama? No, no. You no. shouldn't say that. All right. Why? So I love this story. There is a what's known as the church on the mountain. Mm, that sounds very ominous already. It really does. So there's a cemetery, right? And then there's a mountain. You need to stop doing that. Then there's a mountain on the cemetery. Like a cemetery and then a mountain and then supposedly another cemetery like in the mountain with these kind of hidden gravestones and stuff like that. If you go up the mountain, you will find a pedestal. And on that pedestal will be a book. All you've got to do to earn the respect of your friends and family and your peers is take that book and bring it down to the church. Wait, where's the book? It's on a pedestal on the hill? Yes. So there's a, think of it this way, there's a church and a graveyard Mm -hmm. and then a mountain, like a large hill. Mm -hmm. On that hill, there's another cemetery, so not attached to the church, Another cemetery on that hill. So one's a graveyard, one's a cemetery. In that cemetery, there's a pedestal which has a book. Mm-hmm. All you've got to do is grab that book and go down the hill and deliver it to the church. Problem is, it can't be done. Why? It is said that that church used to have kind of an underground satanic cult attached to it. So publicly, it was a Christian, I think it was an Episcopal church, um, and yet, and then um, when all the parishioners would leave, then the real parishioners would come, and it was a satanic church, and they would have these things, and they tried to raise the devil, and that book is supposedly the devil's Bible. Mm -hmm. And as you walk from the mountain as you go down the mountain to try to deliver the book to the church it gets heavier and heavier and heavier can you sprint you sh- you can but it's just going to get heavier faster okay. it's not like it's on like a time release thing where it's like you have one minute to get there this isn't like a, a video game it gets heavier and heavier um until you absolutely collapse with exhaustion and you have to let it go and run away because as you do it they're also voices that you hear there's a witch who's telling you to go back go back go back um there are cult that people stay say that like they run across the ghosts of these cult members who try to like tear them off into the woods all while they're carrying this book down the hill to the to the church um and the only way that you can do it is if you bring dog biscuits dog biscuits um and you feed a gigantic dog that's also that also appears on this path. So if you don't, the dog could bite you. Ooh, ha. Huh. Right? Mm-hmm. Especially if you're still holding the book. But if you have dog bones for him, if you've got food for the dog, the dog will ask you, escort you down into the church with the book. You're not 100% guaranteed to get there, but you'll get a lot further if you've got dog power. Dog power. Dog power. Scooby dooby doo. <clears throat> Rank it. I'd do it. Five out of five. I would do this one I so bad. I would do this. I would do this I one. Would. We could be in Alabama in I like would risk my 14 life to do this hours. One. I would risk my life to do this one. That sounds. <laughs> no, okay, so this is, the thing is, it's okay. not. <laughs> it's, you, di- you know that you die, right? Like, you know that the, the things that. You die? Yeah, like if you don't get the book, like the witch. The cult members, the dog, they're all out to get you unless you can, like, try to deliver so this book. So you die if you don't So you it. could die like, if you're... The easiest thing is literally bring dog treats or bring one of those carts, right? And then put the book on the cart and then sprint. Okay. Go so and run. I think that... I, I, I love the fact that you're bringing logic into this. 
but I think no matter what you bring, it's going to be too heavy to carry. I don't care. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it I anyway. Would do, I would do this one. I would do this one. So, five out of five. So bad right now. Um, I think this might be. Oh no, that's okay. I was spelling Just Arkansas bring over here. Dog. Uh, I have another Alabama one. Alabama is suddenly very interesting. Well, <laughs> okay. So as I started doing the project, Alabama. I went to the Shadowlands. What's the Shadowlands? I know. The Shadowlands is a website that you can go into every state and you can find all these different people who post supposed haunted places. It's a really good place to pull out legends because I believe maybe 5% of the things that the Shadowlands say are true. And I, 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 I'm a teacher. I had seniors this year, and so when the seniors graduated, I had to, um, I had to cover classes, I had to cover detention, ISS, and so I just did a whole bunch of research because I had nothing to do, and I started doing it alphabetically, and so I have a ton of Alabama, mm -hmm. Arkansas, like Arizona, like of those stories. I didn't do all of them tonight, but I've got a whole bunch of those that are saved for this project already. Um, but that's why they're, <laughs> that's why we've got a lot of A's and G's. All right. Ready? Sally Carter's grave in good old Huntsville, Alabama. Sally. Mm. I can't remember why Huntsville, Alabama is famous, but I know it's famous for something. So Huntsville, Alabama, if you guys can remember what's in Huntsville, I don't know why I'm, I'm blanking. Unfortunately, Sally Carter died in 1837. She's old. She, well, I mean, come on. Yeah, she is oh, really old. Almost 200 years old. Wow, really? Her, um, her grave was basically, uh, and her ghost was at rest for almost a hundred years, until in 1919. Uh, 1919. A boy had a horrible dream where Sally Carter, who he had never, he didn't know, he didn't, he was staying at, at a place nearby, like a hotel nearby, uh, with his family. Had no idea who Sally Carter was. She appeared to him in a dream uh, for several nights. And then on the last night, she like physically was in the room with him. And she told him, for some reason, that he had to go and fix her grave. Uh-oh, Go What's and wrong? fix my grave. Go and fix my grave. And he became obsessed with it. Um, so he went to her grave. He found. He did some research. He found where she was. I mean, she, her grave was like right nearby. It was in the neighborhood, and her headstone was knocked down. Oh yeah. Mm. Right. And they say it was a storm. Like it wasn't vandals I think I've heard or anything this. I think like I've heard that. This. And so he literally just like lifted her headstone back up and and put it back into place. And it started glowing, and she came down from the heavens. I'm kidding. Oh. oh. But since the story goes that if you go and knock down her do headstone? something to her grave, right? So some people have gone there and like knocked down her headstone. Other people have chipped a small piece of it away and brought it home with them. Other people have like taken flowers that other people have left. If you do that, um, you can get Sally to visit you at night and she will continuously taunt you and torment you until you bring the thing back and place it back on her grave, or put the stone back, or do whatever. Would you go and spit on Sally Carter's grave? No! She she doesn't know that that's a movie, I spit on your grave. I just mean, would you go and take something for her, from her grave? No! And, and allow her to that, haunt your dreams? No! There's no benefit for that. <laughs> well, is there's there no, a benefit in any of this? Like, what are you talking in about? In fact, in fact, if I lived nearby, and I knew that I do, I, if I lived nearby, I would go to the graveyard every day to make sure that nobody knocked Miss Sally's he headstone over or took flowers or something. And I, if, it, if they took, if they like knocked the headstone down, I would lift it back up so that they don't get teased and torment. Or if wouldn't you want them to be tormented? I mean, this is really one of those legends. Honestly, but now, yeah, obviously, though. the boy from 1919 is not this, but this is really one of those cautionary tales about don't take shit from the cemetery. It's don't not... do damage to the headstones. Or literally those people are going to come back and haunt you. It's a warning. It's not... You know what I'm saying? Like, that's Actually, what the legend yeah. is born out of, right? So... Oh, like, so wouldn't you want those people to have bad things happen to them for... Actually, yeah. Why'd you just point... So that you can say hello if you want to. Hi! <laughs> All right. 
Our final one of the evening. Of the evening. Of the evening. Evening. Good evening. Oh, that's really long. It's really not. (laughs) I can't believe you just said that on air. Mary, the ghost of Mary Meinhardt. Another Mary. Mary. This is like... (sighs) She is in the Marietta National Cemetery in Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. We could be in this cemetery in seven hours. I have camp tomorrow. Anna Manaconda. Who cares? <laughs> this is like, we could, I could, I, we, anyone who's looking for a fun time, anyone who's looking for a fun time this weekend, who wants to go <laughs> to Georgia with me Stop. and hang out with Mary Marinette, Ma, uh, Minert, direct message me. Um, so it is a statue of Mary and she is holding, so there's her, her grave and then on her grave is, is a statue to her. And she is holding twin babies, right? Mm -hmm. Because when Mary was 34, in 1898, she died of tuberculosis. Also known as? Yellow something, no. Yellow fever, no. Consumption, yes, excellent, consumption. Yeah. Um, And her children were only four weeks old. So... I mean, imagine how sad that is, like, you know, uh, four-week-year-old mom, twins, died. And she is, and so the husband made this statue of her, and she's holding the twins in her arms. Sometimes. Sometimes. Does she drop them? She does. (gasps) Oh, wow. Sometimes the Mary statue, you go there, and she has no twins in her arms. Sometimes the twins will switch. They right? S- how do you so tell they're, they're different? Are they different? Uh, yes. They're not identical twins. I don't. I don't know. This is one of those things you'd really have to see the statue to do it. But they're supposed to like switch. Sometimes she's not holding them. Sometimes her arms are crossed. Sometimes her hands are like this. <sighs> um, because she is extremely sad. As a matter of fact, that statue has been known to. Cry. I feel like I've heard this. And it cries so badly that it actually wettens the whole front of, uh, of, of the statue. Um, people have heard her crying. People have heard um, little girl's voice go, uh, calling out mommy right near her statue. Mm-hmm. And Isn't that four weeks old? Well, I'm, it's not her babies didn't die. She died. I know, but... So you can imagine, like, her children went to the grave and were like, Mommy, we love you. Mommy, Mommy. Mommy. (laughs) Um, And so there's kind of like a second recording that's there. But there is a ritual you can do as well. So the first is... Of course there is. Of course there is. The first is you can um, walk around her statue three times, Right? And if you walk around the statue three times and say, Mary, Mary, how did your children die? Mary, Mary, how did your children die? Mary, Mary, how did your children die? She will appear as a ghost. And she will tell you how your children are going to die. So she'll tell you how many children you're going to have. And then how those children are going to die. Or, two separate legends, you do the same thing, chanting, Mary, Mary, how did your children die? You go around, how many times do you think this time? Three. No, three is one of the legends. What's the other legend? How many times? Six. Ooh, no. Thirteen. Oh. You go around thirteen, her ghost will appear and just start to cry. And as the the ghost is crying in front of you, she won't tell you how the kids died. But as she's crying in front of you, the statue behind her will also start to cry. Okay. Mary. Other I bet Mary. you would want to do that. Mary at a National Cemetery, seven hours away. Would you go? Mm, sure. Would you go next weekend? No, you're going to be in Arkansas next I'm weekend. I'm going to be in Arkansas, yeah. Would you go on the 10th of July? Should we take a road trip? I've got like seven different cemeteries all around this area. 
that we could. I'm too lazy to go to the <laughs> <laughs> But would you go to this one? So what do you think this one is? And once again, don't think of it as during the day. Think of it like at night. Would you go and do this one? Well, I mean, like, I don't want to make Mary cry. So you don't, think, you don't you don't think it would be scary? You don't think it would well, be like... It would like, probably be terrifying to hear out of the blue just... I, I, I love your compassion on this. The fact that you're actually thinking like, well, I don't want to make her cry. Like she's not cry. crying for eternity anyway. Like you have no real impact. Yeah, but she, she cries more when you do that. Um, plus... But the statue cries plus even when I, you're not I bet, there. I bet you would want to do it because you want to know how I die. Right? You want to know how Sometimes quick, I feel like I'm going to know how, how you die. How quickly, um, how quickly you can get rid of me. Don't, don't say that. I love you sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Um, so that's kind of the, the stories, right? Of those, which ones did you like? Which one did you like the best? Like if you could go one, hop on a plane or jump in a car right now, which one would you be most likely to do? Um, wait, let me see. I don't know what it's called. I didn't know you could get cured from consumption, Rita. It's really just two the two pages. Where is it? Okay. Which one would you want? Okay, we're gonna see the same thing. You know, you know. I think we both think the cemetery it. mountain. The church on the mountain. Yeah, ch church. Church mountain. on the mountain. I would. Church get, on the I would. Five out of five would do it. Well, keep in mind that you are going to Arkansas, and Arkansas is really close to Alabama, so. Yeah, we're driving too. Get what I'm saying? Just saying, and actually, if we were to go to Coon Hill, Coon Hill, I think, is right on the border of of Alabama. Mm -hmm. So we could visit Coon Hill and hit this one. Just saying, sounds like a good summer legend trip. All right, so that's kind of the stories that I have. Now, from all of those, I want to see how many of the themes you can get. So I have eight themes. I've boiled, uh, I've boiled the... Um, the uh, different things that happen in these cemeteries down to eight different themes. And not all of them were expressed in this story, but these are the ones that I feel um, are really kind of strong ones. Can you think you can name any of the themes that tie some of these stories together? These are all going to be like um, chapters of the book. Don't steal stuff from great or Good. Cemeteries. I call that one damaging done. Good. Um, Seven more. Uh, um, don't test the devil. Good. Evil graves and cults. Good. <laughs> Good. Two. Two out of eight. Go. Um, uh, I can't think of any others. Uh, don't fall in love. Okay. Good. Children and marriage. I have <laughs> as a theme. So, to, to get that one a little bit more, there are a lot of, um, which Coon Hill, one of the legends that's in Coon Hill, is that if you're trying to get pregnant, Coon Hill is the cemetery, you'll remember this part, it's the Humpty Dumpty one. Coon Hill is the cemetery where you have to walk the whole length of the wall. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And unseen hands try to push you off the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, the other legend that's involved in there is if you are trying to get pregnant, if you go there, uh, you're more likely to get pregnant. So if you go to that cemetery, mm -hmm. you will be pregnant in your next cycle, which I don't want to talk about. Um, but then there's also these marriage ones. So, for example, Wild Cow Cemetery. Well, I if know you go to Wild Cow is. Huh? I know what Wild Cow is. Right, but did you know that if you go to Wild Cow with a person uh, of the opposite sex, we're assuming, it's still Pride Month, that this can also yeah, be as someone who is um, of the same of the same of the same sexual orientation as you, or the same that uh, you will marry that person, and that will be a successful marriage. And there are literally generations of people who have fallen in love at Wild Cow and got married and stayed married. So that how is definitely you, one. How of the did you? Of when did you two fall in love? Well, you know, we went to the cemetery. Well, no, it's not necessarily they went to this. They found love in the cemetery, like they they saw each other across crowded headstones. But they have spent they spent time in the cemetery before they were married, and then they got married, mm -hmm. and then the marriage lasted forever and ever. Um, good. What else? Um, one of them is grave houses, which is going to be the subject of next week's episode. You'll never get that one, so I'll mark that one off. Next week we're going to do a whole coins. episode. Yeah, leaving coins. On which one? I'm glad you asked. We didn't go over this one. I said that some of them weren't ones we went over. 
Do you remember Coker Cemetery? Of course I do. Do you remember? Um, do you remember when we left the um, the coins at Okamic? Okamic Cemetery. Yes, I do. Oak Ridge. Oak, Oak Ridge, Ridge Cemetery. Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge Cemetery. That's the creepy one, right? That's one of the rituals as well. If you leave coins at this cemetery, um, something will happen. So, for for example, and you guys can listen to the Coker. I'll put it in the show notes. In the Coker Cemetery, if you leave coins for the little children that are there, you're going to get uh, good luck, right? Um, whereas for, for, the, for the Oak Ridge, it's really more of just a memorial. Another one is Missing Graves and Disappearing Cemeteries. That, that's a little weird. So some people feel that the, the, the Ghost Mountain, what was it called? Church of the Hill. Church oh, on Church the Hill. Mountain. Church Mountain. Um, cemetery Mountain. That this is one of those, well, because a lot of people can never find it, that it is a cemetery that disappears. But there are other reports, especially in the Ocala, there are a lot of reports of these disappearing cemeteries. So cemeteries that people go to and they can find it, and the next time they go, they can't find it. The cemetery is moved. Spider Gates. Have you ever heard of Spider Gates? No. So, for years, Spider Gates was the definitive spooky place to go in Massachusetts. And you would go to it, and it's located in this town. Worcestershire. <laughs> Actually, it's located, I can't remember, is it look, I believe it's located in Worcester. What? Worc Worcester. Worcestershire. Worcester. Did you have like a, don't you have a sauce that's pronounced like Worcestershire? That's not spelled anything like that. Yeah. Um, what? So, you're, there are these eight gates to hell. In, uh, so that kind of fits in with the evil ones too. These eight, that is. these eight gates to hell where uh, after you cross the first one, you start to hear voices. Then the next gate, voices get louder and louder. And now all of a sudden, people you feel tugging. And then you feel tugging at your feet. And then you start having weird visions. And then you see like the, go the people who you know being massacred. Then no one can get into the actual cemetery because no one can pass through the eight gates of hell to get into the middle where the cemetery actually is. Why would you go through all the trouble? It's a once again, so it's a it's a ritual, right? It's a thing like who can why, get to the middle of, of But why would you Spider be like mm, yes, I want to bury my family in spider gates? So the main the first people were buried in the inner part and then outer part and then outer part and outer part. So the people who and, and keep in mind that this is a cemetery, you can do your own research uh, if you've never heard of Spidergate Cemetery, but it used to be a very popular legend trip which now has been pretty much shut down. Um, where uh, it's now by the Quakers. I believe it's the Quakers. It's a Quaker cemetery, and uh, it's really, really strict to get into. As a matter of fact, I went there uh, on my, at my bachelor party. So instead of, you know, getting strippers or something like that, we went uh, legend tripping, and we went to Spider Gates. That's a and very first to thing to do. We didn't even get past the first... Uh, we didn't even get to the first gate before we got thrown out of the cemetery and told to tell our ghost friends, our ghost hunting friends, to never come back. Which is funny because ghost hunting wasn't even really a thing back then. Also, with these eight gates of hell, there's also another cemetery that's supposed to be there, which appears and reappears and disappears and then appears on a different place. And it's kind of like this weird traveling one. So I think, oh, and the last uh, leaving offerings. Like the flowers, mm. food, candy. There's actually a place in uh, Florida, in, yum, yum. in 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 Akula, Akula, Akulusa, Akulusa, Akulusa mm. County, Akulusa County, Ebenezer Cemetery in Akulusa County, which is also near, uh, um, which is pretty close to Coon Hill as well, um, where you leave food for the children and the children do nice things for you. Um, and I then, of course, there. the last one I had here was raising raising the spirit. So, like the the the, the crying Mary, where you can actually get her to talk to you. I'm gonna add here nine. Playing with the kids because remember in like um, in once again in, in, in Oak Ridge Cemetery. Go ahead, tell them about that. For what those people? I don't remember anything about Oak Ridge. I, I, I was going to say the, the Robertsons. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the Rob, that's an Oak Ridge Cemetery. That's an Oak Ridge? Yeah. Fine. We're not thinking of the, we weren't thinking of the same... Um, there, there's a few different then. ghosts there. Go ahead. 
I'm talking about uh, the one that I was thinking of, like, from before, when you first mentioned Oak Ridge, was the one way on the other side of Florida. The very, very, very creepy one. There was no one. And there was, like, this giant tree, and there was, like, a bunch of Spanish moss. And there was just, like, graves everywhere. And wasn't it, I'm pretty sure there was a lot of lynchings there. You came with me? Oh, Spring Hill? Yeah. Spring, Spring Hill, Hill. Spring Hill. Spring, Spring Hill. Hill. That's what it's called. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, so basically, it said that um, the kids are said to appear as like orbs, or they're said to like hide and like want to play like hide and seek. You can actually them. play hide can, and seek. You with can these play kids. hide and seek with the kids. That'd be so fun. So that's a, that's another kind of theme: playing with the kids or, or doing something like that. Um, these are all really great ideas. This is, I think, going to be a really fun book to write, which is going to be different than what I've been going through. Um, I would love to hear the stories that you guys have of your local cemetery that's like this, or even a famous one that you've heard of, or a rumor of like, wait, I heard about this place in, please get those to us because we would love to explore them, whether it's physically or via research. And of course, you can get in touch with us a ton of different ways. You can call at any time, not just when we're at the show, at 813-418-6822. You can hit us up on Twitter at Spooky Balsamo. Or Instagram and Instagram Live at Spooky Tripping. And of course, Facebook is Facebook.com backslash Tripping on Legends. And of course, the website is as well um, TrippingOnLegends.com. So there are a ton of ways to get in touch with us. If you haven't yet, please review the show wherever you're listening to it. Uh, I appreciate everyone who comes uh, on Tuesdays. If we don't do a show every Tuesday night, we're going to do a show every other Tuesday night, at least, um, depending on how the summer goes. So we're going we're gonna to be pushing through with this kind of stuff. We've got a lot of different ideas. I actually have about 10 different legend trips I've been holding in my back pocket that are definitely worth exploring on the show. So stay tuned uh, for our summer edition of, <laughs> of Tripping on Legends as we bring you the best legends we possibly can and kind of give you progress on a lot of these weird things that have been going on, these connections that have been leading us to some of these stories as well. I am Christopher Balzano. I am Ella Balzano. And here's hoping... Stay with me! And here's hoping all your trips are Are legendary. legendary. Yeah.